Welcome to the audio workshop. Today we're going to talk about Behringer's, Behringer and Midas's brand new operating system for their digital mixing system, the X32 and the M32. Version 4.0 has some great new features. User input and user output for custom point-to-point -point patching. However, if you're going to use the mix bus, and if you're going to do mains, that's left and right and center, then you still have to understand the most confusing aspect of the X and M32, and that is the out 1 through 16 tab in the output section. In previous firmwares, it was called output 1 through 16. Now it's called out. If you're going to use mix buses, the only way you can route them to a physical output is you through the out 1 through 16 tab. There are alternate ways of using auxiliary out and ultranet. The primary way is to use out 1 through 16. And the most confusing part of this mixing system seems to be the convoluted output section. While point-to-point -point routing solves some of these problems and gives us wonderful mixing capabilities and output capabilities, it doesn't solve our mix bus problem. It's vital to understand the output 1 through 16, or in the new version, out 1 through 16 routing capabilities. Or there's no other way to get mix buses to your talent. It's important to remember out 1 through 16 are virtual outputs. It's the first stage of a two-stage routing system. They go nowhere. They have to be patched into a physical output. A physical output like the XLRs, AES50, or the card outputs should you want to use mix buses into the card outputs. Let's take a look at this new system. This is a basic project, a five-piece drum kit and a bass on channel six. I have wedge monitors on mix bus one, in-ear monitors on five and six. Now we're going to go to the routing. Let's look at, these are just the inputs. This is a quick overview. And as you notice, we can use the user ins on firmware 4. Our AES, we can take our local inputs, all of the usual suspects, user outs and user ins. On the card, it's the same thing, the usual suspects user ins and user outs, but there are no mix buses. Same with the XLR outs. And always remember that there is the out 1 through 8 and 9 through 16. That corresponds to our next tab, which is out 1 through 16. Now, this is what we're going to talk about today. We also have auxiliary outs. We can select mix buses here. And the Ultranet tab, we can also pick up mix buses and the main left and right, which you can't get with direct assignments on the user in. We can do direct channels, but no mix buses. Same with the user out. Back to user out 1 through 16. These outputs go nowhere. They're virtual outputs. They have to be routed in one of the physical outputs. AES 50 the card outputs to the XLRs. We have our mix buses. This is one of the three ways we get mix buses sent to a physical output. We have our mains. This is one of the other three ways to send our mains out. And the matrix. Out 1 through 16, augs out, and ultranet out are the way we send those three things to physical outputs. Also, if we want to have the direct out of the effects. 
out 1 through 16. This is what we're going to focus on, and I'm going to do an example. What we have here, 7 and 8, because that's default for the small consoles. Into virtual slot 6, I'm putting the center channel. Output 1 is going to be my wedge output. Output 2 is going to be a direct out of the bass. Say the bass player wants to send a direct signal back to the stage, either through the console or through a stage box. Notice that bass shows up. and I'm going to change it to be the input directly coming off the preamp. Then we're going to put in the in-ear monitors out of order. I want them to be on 3 and 4. Even though they come in on Mixbus 5 and 6, I want to put them on virtual slot 3 and 4. And you'll see that they are reflected correctly now. And then I'm going to just duplicate the same setup on virtual slots. 9 through 16. There is no reason to do this unless you're moving between consoles and you tend to forget that the big console's output is 15 and 16 and the small is 7 and 8. But we can reroute that. And there's no real reason to mirror unless you're going to bounce back from a small console like a compact or a rack mount version and then sometimes you use the small version, you sometimes use the big one. So I'm going to just double all the assignments here. So when I go to a big machine, to a small machine, all the outputs are where we expect them. Mainly it's the main outputs. On the big one it's 15 and 16, and if you take that scene and you put it in a small one, then you don't know what you're going to get. One time I did it, and I had sound output, to the mains and it was full volume. I had no control. Just the way that it happened to be routed. The Out 1 through 16 tab has been one of the most confusing parts of understanding the X32 and the M32 mixing system. By showing you how it works, I hope you have a little bit better understanding of this remarkably powerful system. And if you have a question, please leave it in the comments. If you like what you've seen, go ahead and subscribe.